again in this question you said the position vector of points p of points a b and c are a b and c respectively find the position vector of points p which divides ac in ratio 1 to 4 and b in ratio 3 to 5 okay so that means let's say we have point a to be at this place and point b to be at this place and point C to be at this place because we are looking at AC and what BC okay and BC so AC is this so let's say we have AC is going in this direction and BC is also going in this direction okay so let's say my origin is somewhere here my origin is, is somewhere here Alright, so I just need to connect this to my point B here. So this will go here. So this is my vector B. And this will go here. This is my vector A. And this will go here. And this will be my vector vector C. Alright, so if I divide AC in one to in ratio one to four, so let me say this is my position vector R1. All right in ratio 1 to 4 and let's say this is my position vector r2 in ratio in ratio what is that 3 to 5 so that means we have 3 to 5 you can see the way i take the, take the orientation 3 to 5 so that means this will start from 3 then go to 5 because i'm going from b to c so we have 3 to 5 okay now let's call this point P and let's call this point Q. Okay. That position vector here. Let's call it point P and point Q. So what do you notice? You notice that the ratio of AP to what PC is 1 over 4. So that means AP to PC to PC is what 1 over 4. And not only that. The ratio of BC, BQ rather, to what? To QC is what? 3 over 5. Now, the question now is now what is now my. If not, now, if I now cross multiply before that, I'm going to have 4 AP to be equal to PC. And I'm also going to have 5 BQ to be equal to 3 QC. Alright, so now what is my AP? My AP is just simply OP minus OA. So I can write this as OP minus OA. And my PC can be written as what? OC minus OP. Okay? So meaning that I can now have this to be 5 into OQ minus OB. Then here also I'm going to have this to be 3 into OC minus OQ. Now this can be written as 4. Now what's my OP? My OP is R1. Then what's my OA? My OA is what? Just vector A. And this is vector C minus R1. Okay? Because my OP is R1. And here I can write this as 5R1 to be equal to 4A plus what plus C. So that means my R1 would be what 4A plus C over 5. Similarly, if I try to write this also, what's my OQ? My OQ is what R2. Then my OB is just vector B. So meaning that here I will have OC which is vector C then minus OQ which is vector R2 and if I call it like that that means I'm going to have 6R2 to be equal to 5B plus C that means my vector R2 would be what 5B plus C over 6 so meaning that the point where this divides vector AC or line AC in ratio 1 to 4 must be what? must be 
4 the position vector will be what 4a plus c divided by 5 and the position vector will divide bc in ratio 3 to 5 is what 5b plus c over what over 6 so i hope you guys comprehend that question so let's move on to the next question in this question it said find the direction cosine of the vector p which is equal to 3i minus 9j plus 2k now you recall that the direction cosine the direction cosine is the cosine of the vector which makes with the x y and z axis so for us to calculate the direction cosine the very first thing we might want to do is to do what what are the direction ratios of p so the direction cosine is just direction ratios divided by the mag by its magnitude so what is the direction ratio the direction ratios is given as 3 comma minus 9 comma 2 okay so what's the magnitude of p the magnitude of p is just what the square root of 3 square plus minus 9 square then plus 2 square which will give us the square root of now let's try to pre press our calculator here we want to find the square root of 3 square plus 9 square then plus 2 square that will give us square root of 94 okay so meaning that the direction cosine of therefore the direction cosine of vector p would both would give us 3 over square root of 94 comma minus 9 over square root of 94 and 2 over square root of 94 of course we need to rationalize the denominator that means we can write this as 3 root 94 over 94 or you have this to be minus 9 root 94 over 94 and this will give us 2 root 94 over 94 which can still be written as of course this is this is just 94 over 94 okay so meaning that this one too is also 94 so two, 94 divided by 2 will give us what 47 so this will give us 2 root 94 over what 47 so these are these are the direction ratios of this what of this particular vector so let's move on to the next question in this question it says show by vector notation that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other now if you take a look at the rhombus below or the diagram below this is actually a rhombus okay we want to show that the diagonal bisect each other now for us to show that the diagonal bisect each other if i'm able to find the midpoint of ac and i'm also be able to find the midpoint of bd okay that means I can show that their midpoints are what are the same thing. So if their midpoints are the same thing, that means they must bisect each other. Now to do that, if I say if I let the midpoint of the midpoint of AC of vector AC of vector AC be equal to M1 and I let the midpoints of of vector BD. Now look at the orientation here. BD B equals to M2. Okay. Now my job here is to show that. Now let's say this is my M1. The midpoint of AC is M1. And the midpoint of BD is M2. Now if I'm able to show that M1 is equal to M2. Okay. That means that what? That means the diagonal must bisect each other. Now for me to show that M1 is equal to M2. It is sufficient for me to show that AM1 is equal to AM2. Okay, so if I'm able to show that AM1 is equal to M2, then that means M1 must be equal to M2, which implies that what the diagonal what bisect each other. All right, now let's move on. How do we now show that AM1 is equal to AM2? It's not what we want to do now. Now, if you take a look at it, what is our AM1? By definition, our AM1 is what? The midpoint of AC, which is which can be written as 1 over 2 AC. Okay? 1 over 2 AC. And not only that, what's my AM2? My AM2 can be written as what? 
I am to complete NAS. If you take a look at this from your vector addition, you will see that this is a b right then plus what plus one over two plus one over two b d b d okay this is r for b d or we can write it as b m two and don't forget that your b m two is actually r for b d so which is this analysis then here i can write this as what one over two a b plus one over two a b then I will have plus 1 over 2 BD. Alright, now here I can write this as 1 over 2 AB. Then plus. Now, if you take a look at this, two vectors are said to be equal if they have the same magnitude and they have the same direction. Okay? Now, if you take a look at DC and AB, we can say that DC is still the same as AB. Why? Because they have the same magnitude and they also have the same direction so we can write this as we can replace a b with what with dc plus one over two b d all right so that means i'm going to have one over two a b plus b d then plus what b c or plus dc rather this should be dc which will give us what which will give us 1 over 2 what 1 over 2 AC okay because AB plus BD would give us what would give us AD then AD plus DC will give us what AC so that means we have AM2 to be equal to 1 over 2 AC that means that implies that so if from your hypothesis we have AM1 to be equal to 1 over 2 AM2 that means we are going to have a m1 to be equal to now this is 1 over 2 a c which is written as what a m2 that means we can conclude that what m1 is equal to what m2 so since their midpoints are the same thing that means since the position of their midpoints are the same thing that means the by the the diagonal bisects each other so that means we cannot conclude that the diagonal the diagonal by set each other or each other that's what quite easily done okay we can think about it in another way but this is just how i feel about this how i think about it and which i think is actually very correct okay so let's just move on to the next question in this question they said if a plus b and a minus b are mutually orthogonal show that the magnitude of a is equal to the magnitude of b so here from the hypothesis they said if a plus b and a minus b are mutually orthogonal now if you remain if i may ask you when are two vectors said to be orthogonal two vectors are said to be orthogonal if their dot product is what is zero so that means i'm going to have that means if a plus b is perpendicular to a minus b all right so that means let me shift it down a little bit that means that what the dot product of a plus b and a minus b must give me must give me zero okay now if i try to expand this that means i'm going to have a dot a okay then minus a dot b then here i will have plus b dot a then here i will have minus b dot b okay to be cos zero now from the property of dot product you know that a dot b and b dot a are commutative what i'm saying is that a dot b is still the same as b dot a so since you have that understanding that means that what I can have this as a dot a minus a dot a a dot b rather then plus a dot b then plus what b so this should be minus not plus minus b dot b okay to so be equal to zero now you have minus a dot b 
plus a dot b this will take care of itself that means i'm going to have a dot a minus b dot b to be equal to zero okay so what is a dot a a dot a itself is what magnitude of a all square from your property of dot products then my b dot b itself will also be what magnitude of b all square to be equal to zero and if i take it to that side that means i'm going to have magnitude of a all square to be equal to the magnitude of b all square and clearly you can see that the magnitude of a is equal to the magnitude of what magnitude of b quite easily done so let's move on to the next question in this question question 18 they said the position vector of points a b c d relative to the origin are respectively b c and d find b c plus b d and ac plus what plus B B C. now here we want to find bc plus bd this is very simple you know bc can be written as what oc minus ob then what is what of bd that's od minus what ob okay so that means we can now have this as what so the, the position vector of OC is C, the position vector of OB is B, the position vector of OD is D, and the position vector of OB is still B. So that means I will have this as C plus D minus what to be. Alright, so what of AC plus BC? AC plus BC is what? OC minus OA. 10 plus OC. I'm writing the position vector BC now, okay, in terms of its position vector. That's OC minus what? Minus OB, okay? So here we have this to be C minus A, then plus C minus B. So here I will have 2C minus A minus B. And we are done. So let's move on to the next question. They said find the modulus. Of the resultant velocity velocity is eight meter per second and six meter per second inclined at an angle 60 degree so we want to find the modulus of the resultant vector now let's say we have two vectors okay this is eight meter per seconds and another vector which is um, going in this direction let's say this is um, 6 meter per second obviously this will be our resultant vector okay not, not before that we are given we are, we are told that it is inclined at an angle 60 degree so this is 60 degree so we let the resultant vector act in this direction okay why because you know that if you have this to be six meter per seconds and you want to continue with that direction that means you will have this to be this will also be what this is this is eight meter per seconds okay so that means the, the resultant vector we act in this in this direction okay so we act in this direction directly from your let's say this is our starting point okay now from your idea of um of course this is 60 so we need to find this angle alpha let's say this is an angle alpha the angle between this uh, line and this vector here and the r let's say it's, it's alpha okay although we are not necessarily interested in that okay but now if this is 60 obviously this if i try to complete this also that means this also will be what 60 degree okay because this is just a corresponding angle f angle corresponding angle are equal from your idea of angles in your secondary school okay this is just 60 degree that is if you have f angle the angle here will be the same thing as the angle here so if this is 60 that means i can find this angle here so what will be this angle here the angle here will be what 120 degree and how do i have that that's 180 minus 60 which is 120 degree because the sum of angles on a straight line so 180 degree so i have this to be 120 degree now this is its 
centimeter right this is six centimeter right and i want to find the magnitude of my horizontal vector again i'm not really interested in this alpha okay i'm not really interested in that i just want to find the mag the question says we should find the resultant vector okay the magnitude of the resultant vector or the mood loss of the resultant vector now how do we find this r from your idea of sine and cosine rule if you know two sides and and the angle and you also know the angle between them which what are we going to use we are going to use cosine rule which says that using cosine rule we are going to have our r square okay to be equal to six square plus eight square minus two multiplied by six multiplied by eight multiplied by cosine of the angle between them which is what 120 degree so that means we are going to have r square to be equal to so let's try to simplify this that means we have six square plus eight square minus two this is eight square minus two bracket six then open bracket eight then multiply by cos 120 degree okay so that means we have this to be 148 so we have this to be 148 so that means our r will now be square root of 148 which is um about 2 root 37 okay so let's try to check that with our calculator so we have square root of 148 so we have 2 root 37 meter per second okay so this is the magnitude of the resultant vector i hope you guys get the idea so let's just move on to the next to the next uh, question